Welcome to the Deep Dive. Today, we're wading into the controlled chaos of the Consumer Electronics Show, uh, CES 2026. Every year, it's this amazing mix of real innovation, some wild concepts, and let's be honest, gadgets that feel like they exist just to get on lists like the one we're about to make. So our mission today is to cut through all that noise. We're gonna hilariously spotlight the wildest, most over-engineered tech from this year. We're hunting for the things designed to solve problems no one actually has. Okay, let's get into it. And it's funny you say that because you, among the official award winners, the main theme was this relentless drive to, quote, remove friction. Yeah. But the more you look, the more you see that removing friction sometimes just means removing the need for, you know, any human effort at all. Right. And yeah, the serious tech was there. You had things like Lenovo's new ThinkPad, which is super modular and repairable. Yeah. And the next gen Boston Dynamics robots. Very practical stuff. But the concepts. Yeah. That's where the future gets truly absurd. And apparently, that absurd future starts right in the kitchen, the first front in the war on effort. We have to start with the V1TL food camera from AmazeFit. I'm looking at a picture, and it looks like a little flip-open communicator from, like, Star Trek. That's exactly the vibe. So it's a prototype, but the idea is you put this little camera on your table about nine inches from your plate, and you turn on dining mode, right. and then you just eat. And it just watches you. It does a lot more than watch. It periodically takes pictures, sends them to an app, and then an AI estimates your ingredients, your mm. portion size, calories, and this is the best part, what you left over on the plate. So it's a digital log of your dietary shame. It's technology dedicated entirely to watching you chew. It is. I mean, Amazfit says faces are blurred and all that, but it really is this little nanny state device right on your dinner table, judging every bite. Turning the simple act of eating into another data point to be optimized, next to your sleep score and your step count a little creepy. It is undeniably creepy. And if being monitored while you eat is too stressful, well, maybe you need the ultrasonic chef's knife. Ah, yes. For the uh, the terrible, onerous struggle of applying downward pressure to a tomato, humanity has suffered for too long. Exactly. This thing is a $399 knife that vibrates about 30,000 times a second, and its whole purpose is to solve the problem of food sticking to the blade. It claims to cut with 50% less pressure. So we've built a complex vibrating machine to make slicing, something that was already incredibly easy, even easier. It's the triumph of technology over the minimal physical resistance of a carrot. From slicing to heating, let's not forget LG's big concept, the selfie microwave. A microwave that takes your picture. It's real. I just, why? Well, it has three cameras, one on the food inside, one pointing at your stove, and a third angled right back at your face. The idea is... Seamless food documentation for the social media age. For the cook who finds lifting their phone to take a photo just too cumbersome, you need to document the reheating of your leftovers in real time, hands-free. I get it. And after all that effortless cooking, maybe you're thirsty. That's where the AI barman comes in. You just say something like, make me something fruity, strong, and festive, and it mixes a custom cocktail for you. Okay, that part actually sounds pretty useful. I'm not going to lie. It does, but here's the twist. Before it serves you, it uses facial recognition to check if you're uh, sober enough for another drink. Wait, what? It can also check for a valid ID if it thinks you look underage. It's a bouncer for your kitchen counter. How does that even work? I mean, alcohol tolerance is so different for everyone. Lighting conditions, that sounds like a massive liability. It's pure technological hubris. We've built this amazing convenience machine, and then we've given it the impossible, ethically fraught job of being a behavioral cop a job it's almost certainly terrible at. Okay, let's transition. Because this quest for a zero effort life moves well beyond the kitchen. This is where things get really interesting. We're now talking about replacing core human functions, starting with the Roboroxaris rover and its war on stairs. For years, this staircase has been the final boss for the robot vacuum. And clearly, some engineers took that personally. So they built this, this little rover, it has a two-wheel leg design, it looks aggressive. And it can climb stairs. I saw the video. It hops over things. It can handle curved staircases, carpeted ones. The one safe haven from the robot uprising, the second floor, is no longer safe. We poured so much ingenuity into solving the minor inconvenience of, you know, carrying a vacuum upstairs. And while the rover conquers the indoors, the Hypershell X Ultra Exoskeleton is conquering the outdoors. This is an AI-powered exoskeleton made of carbon fiber and titanium. And it's not for medical use. It's for hikers and runners. It's pitched as an enhancement, 
It gives you motorized assistance, reduces your physical effort when you're walking by about 22%. But isn't that, doesn't that defeat the entire point of going for a hike? That is the core question. We're so close to a future where hiking means strapping yourself into a machine that just drags your limp body up a mountain so you can see the view. It's a desire to experience the destination without the journey, right? To get the vista without the climb. And that same impulse is now being applied to our emotional lives. Which brings us to the rise of artificial companions. Exhibit A, the Lepro Army. The Ami is, and this is their term, an AI soulmate. It's an empathetic companion that lives inside an 8-inch curved screen, usually as a little holographic woman, and it's pitched directly at lonely remote workers. So we took a chat bot and gave it an expensive physical body that needs its own spot on your desk. Mm -hmm. It's blurring the line between a tool and a needy friend you can't get rid of. I think the appeal is the predictability. Human connection is messy. The AMI offers a perfectly optimized, predictable feedback loop. No effort required. And that continues with things like the Tombot robot dog, Jenny. Right. It's a realistic looking dog that wags its tail, it barks, but you never have to walk it or feed it. It's designed for people with dementia or anxiety. And then there's Suikar. It's like a Tamagotchi egg that physically grows as you nurture it. And once you get it to level 51, it becomes immortal. An immortal pet. Because yeah. the emotional effort of dealing with loss is just another friction point to be engineered away. Nothing says healthy emotional development like a pet that literally cannot die. It's the technological solution to the risk of real attachment. That is such a powerful point. The same drive that builds an exoskeleton to avoid a strenuous walk is building a digital pet to avoid a difficult emotion. <laughs> okay, let's get into the really weird stuff. The microfixes. Gadgets that use massive tech to solve tiny, hyper-specific annoyances. We have to start with the lollipop star. This is a one-time used piece of candy. It costs eight dollars and ninety-nine cents. Yeah. And when you suck on it, it plays a licensed song through your teeth using bone conduction technology. The music is literally coming from inside your head. Of all the unnecessary gadgets at CES, where does a nine-dollar musical lollipop rank for you? Oh, it's top five easily. The marketing says you can taste Taylor Swift. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing that while the sugar is rotting the very bones that are vibrating the melody into your skull. It is just perfect. It's a solution to a problem that couldn't possibly exist. Next up, Razor's Project Motoko. Headphones with cameras. Yeah, headphones with eyes. The idea is they're an alternative to smart glasses. They see, they hear, they think. They're supposed to give you real-time advice about the world around you. So your headphones can now spot traffic lights for you or or identify ingredients on a shelf at the store. Exactly. It turns your audio gear into this all-seeing, all-knowing assistant strapped to your head, guiding you through a world that is apparently too complex to navigate on your own. And finally, for anyone who's ever struggled with a bad home haircut, there's the AI hair clipper from Glide. The world's first smart hair clipper. You pick a style on an app. Of course there's an app. And as you cut, the blade senses your speed, your tilt, the angle, and it adjusts in real time to prevent you from messing up the fade. So AI can now cut your hair better than you can. We don't even have to master simple self-care anymore. We just outsource it to a microchip. And if you pull back and look at all of this, the kitchen surveillance, the effortless hiking, the immortal pets, the self-cutting clippers, it paints a pretty clear picture. CES 2026 really confirms that tech is shifting from being a tool to being this uh, overprotective life partner. The viral stuff isn't about utility, it's about surrendering human agency. So to recap, we have AI bouncers in our kitchens, cameras judging our lunch, vacuums that have finally conquered the stairs, and $9 musical lollipops, all of it designed to eliminate any tiny trace of effort or inconvenience from our lives. So what does it all mean at the end of the day? We've seen innovation that's basically just finding something simple and adding microchip to it. And I think that raises a really important question for you, for the listener. If we keep building machines to automate every last ounce of friction, what happens to us? What happens to our capacity for boredom, for minor struggle, for just the simple satisfaction of doing something yourself? Which one of these absurd new jobs, eating, slicing, walking, are you most willing to outsource? And what's the real cost of doing that? That is a fascinating thought to end on. You now know everything you need to about the weirdest, wildest, and most over-engineered gadgets from CES 2026. Until next time, keep thinking.